Okay, people, the battery is flashing here. Anyway, it's September 30th, 2018. As you can see, I'm just pulling things out from my garden. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to make some pickles here, probably some sweet pickles. Hold on. Okay, so anyway, this is what I'm doing, you can see, right? And then I'm putting them in this bowl and layering them and just sprinkling a little, sprinkle a little bit of salt, right? The uh, Himalayan salt on top. So I'll layer and then sprinkle and then layer and sprinkle and then I'm just going to put it in the fridge. For about four or five hours they say put ice on it but I don't have any ice right now so I'm just gonna do this and then put it in the fridge what I'm doing here people is I'm, this batch that I'm making right now I just want some sweet pickles and then I'm gonna put them in smaller jars right just hold on okay so that's all I did is I just later layered them these are like the real small ones so now I'm just gonna put some saran wrap on it right and then put it in the fridge and let it sit for four or five hours or whatever it is as I now get on to getting tomatoes ready. Just hold on. I'll show you. All right. So moving along. So this is uh, four cups of vinegar, four and a half cups of sugar, two tablespoons of mustard seed, one tablespoon of allspice whole, and um, what is it? Two teaspoons of celery seed. Okay. You mix it all up. You just bring it to a, to a mild heat. Right? Take a spoon. Oh my, there goes that camera. Getting steamed up here. <laughs> and then after that, you take your cucumbers. You can see them right there. I just let the juice drain out. Um, I'm not going to rinse them because I didn't use a lot of salt. Doesn't matter. I'm going to plop them in there, stir them around, heat them up. Put the grape leaf at the bottom here. Hold on a minute. And then you just put it in a pot and you heat it up. You don't really bring it to a boil, you just heat it up, right? That's what I'm going to do right now, and then you put it into your jars, and then a little bit of onion. Hold on. Okay, so this is so good, people. So I put a little bit of that crispy stuff in there, you know, but as you can see, I also add in one grape leaf, right? So anyway, it doesn't really matter. This is so tasty. I'm going to make another batch, because I already have pickles, pickles, right? But this is so tasty. It's really good. And then I've got a little bit of liquid left here for uh, the, mm, what is it called, the relishes that I'm going to be making. Or I'm going to do another batch, but I'm going to get into relishes first, so hold on. Okay, people, so I'm just, I'm just wanting to finish up here. <laughs> like, I've been doing this since when? July? When the uh, raspberries came in, right? And it's been like pretty much non-stop. I'm, like, I'm like so canned out already, but I still have, I still have, uh, seen that camera flash rhubarb to do and a whole bunch of green tomatoes some of them are turning red but anyway we're gonna go into tomatoes next and then I'm gonna make another batch of uh, these sweet pickles because they're actually very very good you're finally a mate I'm just, oh. <laughs> yeah I'm just uh forcing myself to do this, people. And I still have to finish off the walnuts. Right? So I figure another couple more weeks and then I'll be done. Right? I have to get up into the garage here. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. So, in between doing that, anyway, old school jars and old school lids <laughs> okay so we're gonna do the 190 again just turned up the heat 190 is about eight or so on my uh, thing there right so once I get it up to 190 you know and it looks like yeah I am so once you get it up to 190 then you know you hold it at 190 adjust <laughs> adjust your uh, temperature gauge on the stove right and then hold it I'm gonna do this for 15 minutes at 190 once I get it to 190 because they're not quart size jars right and then we're good to go okay so this is where I'm at this is only a fraction of the green tomatoes that I have as you can see I'm kinda of doing a little mosh posh right in terms of okay I'm just getting them ready and I've already done the other stuff I'll show you hold on okay so this is where we're at right now right now it's my style, people. Anyway, there's the green tomatoes with a slightly ripe one. 
And there's another one down there you can see I mixed it in, so mix it in, right? Obviously, that's going to dissolve. This is three different types of shreddings of red pepper. You can see this one because I'm going to be doing more than one batch. This one's a little more coarser where this one's quite fine. Can you tell the difference between the three? And then here, we're doing it this way. This is chopped. This is from my garden. I just picked them. And then this is just another pepper. And then here is the leftover onion. I just, whatever. And then in this bowl, this is what I'm gonna use for the next three batches, two to three batches of green tomato relish. This is red onion. That's white onion. Well, it's just an onion. Really, you want a sweet onion, but I didn't have it, right? And look at that juice. Mmm. I'm not tossing it. I'm cooking it. Uh, so, I'm going to measure this first. Then I'm going to take probably two cups of something red. Right? And I'm going to do some onions. I have a recipe to follow, but I'm also kind of doing my own thing here, too. Right? Might keep those ones together, right, with another batch. And this one I'm going to mix because I didn't have any green green peppers, so I just used what I had, people. I had more red. Anyway, I'll be back. Oh, yes, and I'm going to put it in this brine that I use for these sweet pickles, which have already been, they've all popped. And their Tisha was eating them. She says she really likes them. So... Anyway, I'm just going to start measuring and put it into this pot, and then we'll just go from there. Hold okay, on. So this is what I got. Nine cups of tomato. Two cups of the finely shredded red pepper. Uh, half a cup of these slices. And then a half a cup of the more into little squares. Not so much this one, but anyway. One cup shredded onion and a half a cup of this uh, green pepper that came from my yard. And then there was about one cup of sweet brine left over. So I'm going to stir this up. I'm going to start cooking it. And then I'm going to make a brine. Hold on. Okay, so this is where I'm at right now. So I added... <coughs> I'm messing with uh, hot chili powder right now. <laughs> Can you see that? <sighs> anyway, I added a one packed, like one cup packed light brown sugar because I wanted it sweeter. And I've added so far a, a, another half a cup of um, vinegar. And I gotta write this down so I don't forget. I've only added one tablespoon of salt, although I've got two written there, so I'm not too sure if I'm going to I don't know if I need it. <coughs> and now I've added so far a half a teaspoon of this hot chili powder. Right. I'm going to add a little more because I, I want, I'm trying to get just a very mild bite. I don't like things personally hot, hot, but sometimes it's... You know, a little bite is nice, right? In terms of, like, you could put a chili pepper, hot red chili pepper, when you make pickles in your jar with your cucumbers and your dill and your um, garlic. And I will eat those. Those are nice. And contrary to popular belief, for some people, vinegar is not bad for you. You know, even though you're cooking the food and you're preserving it in vinegar... It's still good for your body. And if you notice, when you break out a jar of pickles, oftentimes people will go for them, right? Because they want the acid from the vinegar. Their body is craving it, right? Just like, you know, if you give people a choice of food, they'll go to the food that their body is most craving, right? In terms of what it needs. So anyway, hold on. See, people, it's stuff like this. When I come in here, I open up something, right? And it just, like... Flashback for Shimei, because Shimei used to like to come in here and and grab up these kind of things, right? You know, she'd go through all my spices and take out stuff, right, that she liked, right? 
<clears throat> so when I open up my cupboard, like, and I'm like thinking about it, right? Look, there's some old spice. I just taste it. It's okay. We'll put a half a teaspoon in there. Oh, a quarter. A quarter. It's, um, I don't know. A little dry. I like the other one better. But this is pretty tasty, people. So what do you think? 12 jars for that? Maybe not, right? Maybe what? Nine? I think. I'll do all 12. Boil them up, and then we'll see what we get. <coughs> I like to do them in smaller jars, this stuff, so that things don't go to waste, right? Because it takes time to make this stuff, eh? Okay, so now I'm boiling my jars, getting them ready. I got 14 half pints in there, right, in that canner. This is uh, tapioca starch, two tablespoons, and just a little bit of water. You have to mix it in with some water, people, otherwise it's going to get uh, clumpy if you just put the uh, tapioca in there, right, by itself. And then stir it around. Oh, I got to sneeze. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. If you need a little more, you can add a little more. Right? So, anyway, that looks pretty good. So, I got two, at least two more batches to go. Hold on. Okay, so basically, I cooked it for almost an hour, right? On low heat, you know, medium high. Me sorry, medium low. It was like four or something like that, right? And, uh,. So everything is tender. You see, I left a couple of those, right? Just a half a cup, right? Do you see? Just for that. Mmm. Right. That tastes pretty good. So we're going to can that up. I said maybe nine jars. I've got 14 in the canner, so we'll see what we get. Elsie likes to babysit Amari. Can you see that? What are you doing, Elsie? Elsie. Okay, people, so now it's October 4th. Still working on these green tomatoes. This is my second batch. I already did a second batch of uh, sweet pickles because Tisha likes them, right? And so anyway, I'm making this sweet hot. <coughs> hot in terms of chili peppers and that type of thing. I'm giving it a bit of a bite, but I want it sweet. All right, so just boiling that down, and then there's my green tomatoes. You can see that big bowl, right? It's all going in there, and then I'm not going to cook these as long because I don't want them turning into mush, right? So I'm going to cook this just a little longer, and then, uh, yeah, hold on. Okay, people, so now it's October 14th, like about 20 to 5 in the morning. <laughs> when you work like that for two days straight... You end up going to bed early, and the thing about my body is, I only sleep for as long as my body needs. Not as for as long as my mind needs, but for as long as my body needs. So needless to say, I've been up since like 2 o'clock this morning, because I went to sleep at 9 o'clock yesterday. Right? But that's not to say that I'm not tired. So anyway, I have a video on the computer that I haven't uploaded yet. That's all in relation to this stuff. So this is the end of it. So now after this, I get to start putting things in boxes and putting it all away or whatever, whatever I'm doing with it. So we're just going to go through it. These are tomato relish, which I still have to do one more batch. All right. Sweet pickles, you can see. Nice. Alright. There's lots of them there. This is grape juice from my yard. The green grapes. Green grapes oxidize, so that's probably why it's that color. Here's just two plum juice. This is grape juice from purple grapes that were given to me. Oh, it's so good. And then because the sweet pickles tasted so good and Tisha likes them... I made another little batch. Here's that apricot spread. I've already put the um, juice away. All right. 
These are the beans that I grew this year. Now, mind you, my landlady takes a fair amount. So what I'm going to do is next year I'm going to plant more beans, but I'm going to make one patch where I'll just tell her no because I'm drying those ones. Right? I'll patch. I'll, I'll put like three or four or five patches around the yard and I'll make them more more condensed because she really enjoys that right but I want more than that so just plant a bit more anytime you can find them people they're 88 cents a jar right so I bought six of them and they're soy sauce superior dark superior light and something else there right 88 cents versus three dollars a jar so pick them up going to storage this is some old mm, olive oil from back in the day from storage I pulled it out I'm going to use that same thing with the corned beef I'm going to use that that's from food storage right then I made another batch of uh, tomato relish here you can see it's hot sweet so it has a bit more bite than this one right and I still have green tomatoes, so I actually got to make another batch anyway. And then what I got from the walnuts were three jars. This is the English walnut. Now, mind you, these these trees were cut down premature, right? And some of them overdried, and when they overdry, they tend to get a little more bitter. So, but that's okay. Something is better than nothing. And then. Just for every walnut, hold on, anyway, for every black walnut that you see here that's been dried, because it just didn't make it, just didn't have the time to do every walnut, people, plus these were immature, you can see how small they are, because they cut down the tree too soon, right, if they would have left it till October, these things would be off the tree with full husks fully ripe and the nut itself would have been bigger I'm even questioning some of the ones that I have in the fridge or whatever for planting like I you know cuz these nuts they needed another month and a half to grow right so I don't know how well they're gonna produce trees cuz they're so tiny but sometimes it's amazing all it takes I have gone out in my yard and I have found a tree that came from a nut this size, so it's possible, right? Hold on, I'm going to show you these, just wait. So anyway, this is the end of the video in terms of blah, right? And we're going to end it on this. So for, for one of these, this is going to be Andre's walnut art. Every part of the black walnut tree you can use. So for every one of these people, you can make ink. And then it's like a little kinder surprise. You get the nut inside, right, after you make the ink. But the thing about the ink is it can last up to a thousand years. So do you see how many nuts are here? <coughs> That's a lot of thousands of years of writing. Mm. Right?